Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker is actually allowing the Minister for Youth and Sports. After all, this is a youth project, or even the minister in whose ministry the project would be located to... to well, the, the, the speaker was about to close the debate, Madam Speaker, and you had started to state the question. But you will get a chance, Honorable Member, to, to then speak more. Because, Madam Speaker, the, the Honorable Member for Miko North did provide some information on the project. But there's still a lot more we'd want to know about the project, and this is an opportunity for the line ministry responsible to give even more detail than what the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister said. This was first mentioned in the budget address, Madam Speaker. And one would have hoped in the debate on the estimates, of course you recall what happened, that the Minister of Responsibility would have taken the opportunity to provide more information on this initiative. Because, Madam Speaker, I actually rise in support of the initiative. I think, like the member for Castro Central, who shares a constituency which is similar to mine, that these initiatives are really critical. Madam Speaker, I was born in the youth movement of St. Lucia. I grew up in the youth movement in St. Lucia. And like other members on this side, member for Library, member for Denry North, member for Viewfort North, we were all in the youth movement together. The member for Castries North is not here, but he was a prominent youth leader in his days. And we know what it is like for young people to be struggling and trying their best to survive in this country without engaging in any deviance or any acts which are not considered legal. And when an initiative like this is introduced by any government, I think we need to support it, Madam Speaker. We need to support it because it will give an opportunity for young people to be engaged in constructive activity. Madam Speaker, sometimes what our leader says about us tells us what they think of youth. And I, and I must say, I was quite happy to hear this morning the member for Miko North indicate that we may be accepting students who are dislocated by the hurricane. We have a fine tradition. Honorable member, I think you actually mean the Honorable Prime Minister and me, member for Miku South. Oh, Miku South. Well, I was probably promoting somebody, Honorable Member. The Prime Minister and member for Miku South. Thank you. And he said that we may be acting, accepting students who are dislocated by the damages of the, the hurricane. I was very disappointed when I heard the first statement from our Prime Minister and member for Miko South that the first offer we made was to take prisoners. I'm telling you what I heard, that we were going to be taking prisoners. And I thought to myself then, maybe we should be taking students instead. Why prisoners? And more so, why prisoners from a country that is an overseas territory of the United Kingdom? And I know in a former life as I commissioner Madam Speaker, one of the reasons we objected to the returning of St. Lucian nationals who were in prisons in the UK was because there was overcrowding in our prisons. Because of the state of our prisons, we could not accept them to be transferred to St. Lucia. But we are now saying to the same country, the United Kingdom, that we can actually accept prisoners and we can make space to put the prisoners. I would have said that prisoners from the overseas territories of the United Kingdom that the United Kingdom should accept responsibility for their prisoners. And I would have offered, and I would have by now, Madam Speaker, supported an appeal for families to accept students who are dislocated. These students will be sitting common entrance and A-levels in the next few months, and they should have been the priority. And that would be in keeping with the spirit of this initiative, a focus on the young people, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Beyond this initiative, the ministry and the line ministries responsible for young people and sports have to show even greater responsiveness. And Madam Speaker, I want to take the opportunity to point out to you, and Madam Speaker, you may have seen when you traverse the Bannon Road, there were a number of container trailers packed on the seaside. It was decided by a particular agency that it should not be parked there, and, it was, and all the trailers were removed. And do you know where they were parked? They were taken to Goodlands playing field and packed on a temporary playing field that exists there. A playing field that the young people in the community of Goodlands found necessary to create because they had no place to recreate in the community. And they had a temporary playing field that they maintained and they played the cricket on. And the trailers are now packed there. 
And Madam Speaker, I want to use this opportunity in the House today to call on whichever agency is responsible for placing those trailer trucks on the plain area of the young people to please remove them. Because when we speak about young people and creating an environment for them to be involved in constructive activity, and Madam Speaker, when we are borrowing money to implement projects that will introduce positivity to our young people, we must ensure that there's a corresponding attitude on the actions of other line ministries. And Madam Speaker, I'm making the appeal, and I'm asking you, if you can, to use your good offices to ask whoever, whichever minister, whichever agency is responsible, to please go and remove the trailer trucks from the young people playing area. Madam Speaker, I'm looking forward to this initiative. In Fuashu, we have the Fuashu Dance Academy, headed by a young man who is one of the unspoken heroes of St. Lucia. And he's doing tremendous work in that community. I want him to be able to benefit from those monies. Madam Speaker, we have throughout the constituency, in Bassett Joseph, in Marigo, young people who are involved in dance, and they too will want to benefit from this initiative. I would have preferred, Madam Speaker, that rather than spend money, money on upgrading Georgia Fifth Park, that a multipurpose court could be built in Fuashio, that the community center could be built in Bassett Joseph so the young people can be involved in their arts, their culture, they would have training facilities so that they can be involved in employment creation activities. This is a welcome initiative, and I hope it gets bigger, and it grows, and it creates more opportunity for the young people of Goodlands, whose field has been taken away from them, the young people of Fuashu, the young people of Banan, Sisera, Madam Speaker, and Marigo, and Marigo, Madam Speaker. So I'm really pleased that this has finally been announced, and it will start. Madam Speaker, because when you learn, Madam Speaker, that for the CPL, which just took place in St. Lucia, information reaching me is that our government paid 450,000 US dollars to the St. Lucia Stars with a commitment to pay another 600,000 US next year for five or six matches, Madam Speaker. At both is you, but our young people in Fuashu, in Banan, in Sisera, in Monkey Tongue, they need youth and sports activities and we are borrowing a meager sum of 2.8 million US to assist them. I support it, but I appeal for more for the young people of St. Lucia and Catrice in particular. Thank you very much, man.